In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the steps that we have to take to derive any equations under dimension analysis. So, if you have been taught to derive an expression for the period of pendulum T, if it is related to mass, the length, and the acceleration due to gravity G. Okay, so the first step which we have to take is um, we need first to light the period. So, since we want to find the formula for period, we are going to light the period. Okay, then what we have to do is uh, we need to light now. The next thing is to light the proportionality symbol. Then after lighting the proportionality symbol, we are going to to light the quantities which have been given. Okay, so we have been given the length, the mass, and the g. So we are going to light the mass, the l, and g. Okay, now from here you are going to raise the quantities to any letters of your choice. So in this case, I'm going to use the x, y, and z. Okay, so I'm going to raise it to x, y, and z. Now, this is going to be our formula. Now, the issue here is very simple. After lighting this, this is step one. This is what we call step one. Okay, so you can say this is step one. Now, step two. What we have to do is, uh, we are going to replace the proportionality symbol with equal to k. So meaning that where there is proportionality, this, the alpha, we are going to replace it with equal to k. k is constant. Okay? So we are going to say that this is going to be equal to, it's going to be t, is going to be, where there is this, I'm going to say equal to k then I have got m to the power x, then I have got l to the power y, I've got g to the power z. Okay. Now, this is going to be our formula. This is going to be our general formula. Now, we need to find the values of x and y x y and z now those values after finding the values of x and y x y and z we are going to plug in there and then we, we are going to know to say this is going to be our formula okay now after that we need now to go to step three now step three is very simple and direct step three we have just to replace each quantity with its si units so we have got the mass Okay, we have got the mass, we have got, we have got the period, so we know that the period, it is in seconds. Okay, so we are going to put the period in seconds, so we are going to put in seconds there. I'm going to put seconds, then I'm going to put them in brackets. So K is constant, we don't have to temper with K, so I'm going to put K here. Okay, so this is my... My mass, mass is in cages, so I'm going to put cages, raised to the power what? To the power x. From there, I'm going to have my length. Oh, my length is in meters, so I'm going to put meters. Everything has to be raised to the power y. G is meters per second squared. So it is meters per second squared. And then we have to raise it to the power z. That is step number three. Step number four, what we need to understand is that when it comes for dimension analysis, we are going to put the appropriate dimensions for each unit. What I mean is that where there is uh, meters, we are going to put what? The length. Then I, I need to put the square brackets. Where there is, um, where there is seconds, we are going to put time. So a time is going to be in square brackets, t. Where there is cages, we are going to put what? We are going to put the mass. Now that mass is supposed to be in square brackets. So where there is meters, we are going to put length. That is step number four. So step number four here, we are going to say that this is seconds, it is time. So I'm going to replace it with what? The, I'm going to replace it with the square brackets, then I put t. K is constant, so I'm not going to temper with it. I'm going to put the way it is, K. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be, so we have KG, which is going to be meter, or it's going to be mass, sorry. 
then raised to the power x and then from there we go to um, the meters which is going to be the length okay put raised to the power y then from here now we have uh, we have meters which is going to be the length divided by what the time so now this is going to be raised to the power z now this is going to be raised to the power z even this one which i'm going to put on the denominator here which is going to be second is the second now is going to be time which is going to be this now since there is a power 2 meaning it's going to be 2z okay let me let me put so it's 2z that is step number 4 so i can rearrange this and then i can say that this is the same as it. let me let's just get rid of this we can rearrange this and then we can say that this is the same as, we are still on step number 4 this is the same as t has to be equal to we have the k and then we have um we have the m raised to the power i'm, I'm going to put raised to the power x then we have um, l raised to the power l is raised to the power y then we have also the length now this is l divided by t squared so i can rewrite this and say it's l times t to the power negative 2 which is the same thing okay because uh, if you have um let's say you have 1 to the power let's say 2 to the power negative 1 this is the same as 1 over 2 okay so meaning that if this is the same as that one i can write this one as i'm going to have the length i'm going to have the length here which is going to be uh, the length then i put it it's raised to the power z then times him that one now is going to be the t raised to the power negative 2z because now i've put it there okay we are still on step number five four sorry so now from there what do we do from there now what we need to understand is that we make all like terms together and unlike terms together so what we, what i mean there is that we have got the l and l so we know that if the powers if we have got it, 2 raised to the power x times 2 raised to the power y this is going to be 2x to the power y or if you have um maybe you have 2 raised to the power 3 times 2 raised to the power 4 if the bases are the same you just add the power so it's going to be 2 3 plus 4 on top then it's going to be 2 to the power 7 okay so now after knowing that we need now to to proceed so we are going to say that this is going to be the same as it. we are going to say that that will be now step 5 okay step 5 is going to be step 5 is going to be okay we are going now to to rearrange this so we're going to say t so we know that t is there is nothing there so it, it is raised to the power one so we have equal to now we have k k is constant you can write it there then we have the m raised to the power x then we have l and l they are the same so we are going to write one l and then we are going to raise to the power we are going to add the powers y plus z then we have t is raised to the power negative 2z after this what we have to understand now from here is that yeah, step 6 or oh, from here okay from from here we go to step 6 now step 6 we are going to compare we want to find the values of x y and z after finding those values we are going to plug in in the in step 2 our main formula is step 2 after plugging in the values of x y and z on step uh, step two then that is going to be our expression or that is going to be our formula 
So we, we compare now the left hand side and the right hand side. So this part here, we have got x. To the left hand side, we don't have any x, meaning that x is 0. We don't have anything on left hand side. So we can say that our x is going to be equal to 0. What of y? We don't have l to the left hand side, meaning that it's going to be y plus z is going to be equal to 0. What of t? We have t to the left hand side. It is less to the power 1. So we have got negative 2z is going to be equal to 1. So I can say that z is going to be equal to uh, negative 1 over 2. Okay. So if z is equal to negative 1 over 2, meaning that our y value, to find y, since we have our formula as y is equal to, we have y is equal to, um, or we have y plus z is equal to 0. So if z is equal to 1 over 2, so we have y minus 1 over 2 is equal to 0. So we can see that y is going to be equal to, um, is going to be equal to 1 over 2. Now, after finding those values, then we have now to replace step 7, we have to replace to them the equation which we had step on step 2. Okay? So what we are going to have there is, uh, I can just get rid of this. Remember, we have our formula which is uh, t is equal to the k, then we have m, x, l, y, y, z. So where there is k, k is constant, let's just put it k, then m, where there is m, the values x, so it's going to be m raised to the power 0, that is the, then l is raised to the power y, what is the value of y? y is 1 over 2, so it's going to be 1 over 2, then g, this is g, sorry, g is raised to the power z, so what is the value of z? It's negative 1 over 2. Now from here we can get rid of everything. We are now on step 7. Now the last step, which is step 8, we can now just deduce this one and then we see what we are going to have. So we are going to have t is going to be equal to k is constant. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. So meaning that this part is going to be cancelled. We are going to remain with L raised to the power 2 times G raised to the power negative 1 over 2. But we know that if we have anything raised to the power negative 1 over 2, this is the same as if I have maybe, let's say, 2 raised to the power negative 1 over 2. This is the same as 1 over 2 raised to the power half. So meaning that this part here now, it is k raised to the power, if we have l raised to the power 2, then we have here 1 divided by g raised to the power 1 over 2. Okay, at the same time, we can see that this is the same as, this is going to give us the same as t is going to be equal to the k constant, then we have l raised to the power half divided by what? Uh, g raised to the power half. So if I have a uh, 2 raised to the power half is the same as is the same as the square root of 2. Meaning that this time around I can say that this is going to, to give me t is going to give me k is going to give me the square root of uh, l the square root of l divided by the square root of g. So this is the same as, we can say that this is the same as k. Since this, we have the square root on top and the square root down, we can just make one square root and then it's going to be the root of uh, l over g. Meaning that this is the formula for the period of pendulum, where k is constant. Sometimes you might be given the k value. So if you have been given the k value, for example, let's say that they give you that k is 2 pi, meaning that your final formula is going to be, the final formula is going to be t is going to be equal to 2 pi, the square root of L divided by G. But if you have not been given the value of k, meaning you need to end there. But as long as you have been given the value of k, you replace the value of k with what you have. Okay. So these are the steps which you have to follow in each and every question for dimension analysis. Okay.